Whoa, that is a lot of Trevor blood on you. Great swordsing. Thanks, Parsley. I'm not going to entertain this storyline with any kind of hopeful thinking, as in, oh, maybe the protagonist I hate is gonna die for real. Can't wait to find out. Rosemary lives. Of course she does. She somehow managed to get herself nicked while fighting the boss creature. It's a blink and you miss it frame, but here it is. Rosemary tries to act all brave, because I don't know why. The main hero of this show is so stupid that when she has a gushing wound in her stomach, she doesn't immediately bandage herself up, but instead walks for several miles, lets herself faint into delirium, making everything potentially more dangerous than it needs to be. The girls are already screwed, trapped inside a dangerous dungeon full of creatures that want to cut them into pieces. You need all warriors on their feet. Time is forced to carry Rosemary, because she is so unfathomably idiotic as to not get herself treated right away to mitigate the damage. And of course, none of the girls notice that Rosemary is obviously acting unlike herself, desperately holding herself to keep her guts from spilling out. And again, for the millionth time it feels like, what is this school teaching the kids? The wannabe guardians are sent into this dungeon, where monsters await ready to maul them. First aid skills, magical and traditional variety, should be top priority in preparation for such a trip. Do none of the girls have medical supplies in their bags? No bandages, no potions, no nothing? Parsley has a napkin. A napkin. Look at this. It would be hilarious if it wasn't so pathetic. If you are this incompetent, this incredibly ill-prepared, so magnificently moronic, then from a Darwinian point of view, you all deserve to die here. Sage, I'm thrilled for you to learn about elixirs. Very important for a future healer. You say that so confidently. Yep. I'm going to be so great at magic that I'll be able to wave one hand and make you whole again. Oh, what's this? That's blood, sweetie. Blood? Isn't it supposed to stay inside my body? <sighs> Rose? We have to get back! Let them expel me, I don't care! We don't even have a map. Sage is useless. The genius healer sorceress to be doesn't even try to use her omnipowerful trinket to help her friend when she's literally dying. Her first instinct is to head back, even though she knows full well the path is blocked. That's the only reason the group is where they are in the first place. Everyone in this show, apart from Xenia, is a lobotomized tool. Instead of having the characters do the obvious, the writers keep using them only in service of the next idiotic story beat. Of course there is no healing magic, aside from the healing water inside the very dungeon the girls find themselves stuck in. We have a MacGuffin to hunt in this episode. The girls find another spring, heal Rosemary, and everything is hunky-dory once more. Good for you. I can't imagine anyone with functioning brains who could possibly be invested in this conflict. Especially considering that this episode in particular has established the possible death of youngsters as fun and quirky, instead of serious and dramatic. No author can expect their audience to take their drama seriously, if they themselves refuse to do even that. Now, let's take a different approach to the analysis for a moment. I'm going to describe the sequence between the Parasex and the Gushing Fountain, the amazing adventure the girls end up on, the challenge they need to overcome in order to save their friend, straight up what happens on screen, no tangents, minimal snark, and then I'm going to ask one simple question, Sound good? Not that you can stop me, pre-recorded and all. Here goes. So the girls arrive at this enormous house in the middle of the cave. The furniture is huge, like it's meant for giants. Yet the fountain statue of Vinka is relatively small, like it's meant to be operated by human-sized entities. 
And for some reason it is positioned right in front of the fireplace. In any case, the well is dry just like the last one and Rosemary needs to be healed, as we already know. Now as the girls are panicking over Rosemary's idiocy, they are met by this goblin creature. He rhymes. That's a personality I guess. The goblin offers directions to yet another healing fountain as a prize if the girls play a game with him. A riddle. Correct answer, they get to heal Rosemary. Wrong answer, the goblin eats them. And the riddle goes... If you win, you'll know the exit. If you lose, you'll be my breakfast. That was barely a rhyme, Buckles. Okay, but I'm serious. I do eat people. What am I? That's the riddle? What am I? You're, You're Buckles. Buckles! Oh, I'm sorry. You lose. <laughs> Buckles will feast tonight! <laughs> Wrong answer, so the girls are toast. No idea how this wimpy tiny creature is going to force the girls to hold their end of the bargain. But that's not important, because Rosemary figures out the right answer, delirious or not. The goblin is in fact four goblins running around the house. Riveting. The girls win, it was never established that they get to guess more than once, but that's how it works apparently. The goblins send them on their way, and give them a dragon egg for good measure. Because reasons. The girls drop through a hatch, sound familiar, and end up right where the next fountain chamber lies. The massive doorway has a convenient crack from where to enter, and the girls have all the healing water they could possibly want. Now listening to that description, and seeing it unfold on screen, my question is this. Who wants to see any of that? Pitching this idea, writing this script, animating it, voice acting it, no one on the creative team thought to ask themselves, who exactly is this for? Who in their theoretical audience has ever thought to themselves, I wish there was a show where four girls end up in a cave with a giant house with tiny goblins who rhyme and ask the girls riddles in exchange for access to a healing fountain which they would not need had they not come to the cave in the first place. It may be presumptuous of me, but I have an inkling that no one has ever asked for this. No one wants this, so why is this nonsense here? This event just comes out of nowhere and disappears from memory as soon as it is over. A challenge that means nothing. Overcoming this means nothing. No one learns anything, and no one has to exemplify skills unique to them. It's useless, and it makes little to no sense in context. The dragon egg could be found literally any other way, and it would make just as much sense. The episode would flow objectively better had this scene been cut entirely. And just so no one misses the detail, the girls don't even save Rosemary, she's the one who figures out the riddle, so technically she saves herself. Time is a mule, the other girls are simply worthless, even the most basic power of friendship winning the day is not the payoff here, not in its true essence. Instead of using this time on something of substance, giving the world building any kind of through line, dispensing some lore, explaining how and why this temple cave was built in honor of this mad evil goddess, we get minutes dedicated to this bollocks. Who asked for this? Whose life is enriched after seeing this asinine scene animated and published on a major animation distribution site? Why does this exist? Money, time, effort, down the drain, for this. Everything the writers came up with was gold in their minds. Either that, or no one in the writing room was brave enough to question one another. As we all know, to tell someone that their ideas are flawed is the same as brutalizing them in public. To criticize is to harass. Words are violence. This here, this is the kind of meritless art we end up with when people stop getting scrutinized for obvious horseshit. 
And since this show just keeps on giving, the girls get yet another worthless challenge thrown their way. These diamond golems come to life all of a sudden, filled with piss and vinegar. You dare to plunder the sacred fountain. So none of the other fountains filled with identical magical water are sacred. Anyone can ransack those as much as they please. Okay, got it. Makes about as much sense as anything else in this episode. So the action sequence has all the same issues as the one from before. Lazy and lacking in vision. This kind of opponent should be a grand challenge. Two ginormous indestructible golems. This fight should turn into some Shadow of the Colossus epicness. One of the girls climbing for a weak point, while the others distract the enemy, or something like that. But instead, we use the patented High Guardian Spice logic to solve the problem. The logic being absurdity. Our weapons can't break diamonds! It's the hardest element. Only diamonds can crush diamonds. Sage, that's it! Here's what we're gonna do. You want us? Here we are! Come and get me! Do I need to explain why this is ridiculous? Do I really? I should hope that I didn't. But for the sake of completeness... Yes, diamonds are extremely sturdy. It is difficult to cut into them, other than by some specialized equipment. Nevertheless, the hardness of diamonds is actually something that is regularly overhyped in fiction. They are not some magical indestructible material. They are literally cut and polished after mining, so obviously they have certain vulnerabilities. For example, their structure makes them more prone to cutting from certain angles. And yes, diamonds themselves are used for cutting into other diamonds. The saws and other tools in this process are coated with diamonds for this specific reason. But that does not equate to slam two diamonds together and they fucking explode on the spot. That is not how any of this works. Your payoff cannot be something that you pull out of your ass. Characters are not smart just because you have them say some vaguely sciencey stuff and then miss the actual physics of it completely. This is like something a child comes up with after sustaining themselves with nothing but the power of Minecraft and energy drinks for a week straight. I got this. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.